Hi guys, how are you all doing? George back with another video. Yeah, today I'm going to show two box sets I picked up recently. Um, just share my thoughts a wee bit on them. And just show you them. Um, try and get through this as fast as possible as, as usual. Um, now the first box set um, is Sonny Rollins. Go West. Initially I wasn't going to get it because my local de dealer, the cheapest it was going to be was £150, now it's 3 LPs, £50 a pop, um, and that was the cheapest really, I mean it was going up to 170 180 just ridiculous for 3 albums. Uh, and I already had one of the al albums so um, I wasn't going to get it, and uh, I've seen it for £99. Uh, so I thought, yeah, that's probably about doable. So I bought it, and it, I mean, it's a great box set, uh, Go West. And it says three album set, it says two albums for contemporary records, which are based in uh, Los Angeles, I think. Um, I mean, it's a beautiful box and it's done so well. So you've got this. OB strip here. I'll get th it gets thrown inside the box. The first album is obviously Way Out West, and that's from 1957, and it's a trio. And then the second album is Sonny Rollins and the Contemporary Leaders. The third album is just uh, an outtakes album, alternate takes, and um, so. I think it tells you in here, it was remastered by Bernie Grunman. Um, it's all analogue, 100% um, analogue, and they sound fantastic. So that's the box set. Sonny Rollins, he went out west and recorded two albums. Now, two years in between, he'd done the first album with 59 and uh, 57 of second one of 59. The box is beautiful with uh, the gold lettering, sort of snake skin box. And I'm a sucker for a box set, so let's see what we've got. I'll take out the albums. Let's see, it's beautifully done. And I've just some liner notes inside there and a wee quote by Sonny Rollins there uh, so very beautiful and you get this almost CD sized so that's a hype sticker I stick somewhere appropriate on Kin uh, on Craft Records 70th anniversary uh, so there's a great story it's a great story of Sonny Rollins going west and just falling in love with Los Angeles. Uh, going out live there and recording, managed to now the back. I think he was playing with Max Roach at the time, but he he wanted to record with I think the contemporary guys for a wee change. So I think I don't think Max Roach was too happy about it. But anyway. Uh, it's a lovely little booklet here, it just sits nicely in the inlay part of the box and um, yeah, so that's all nice. So I already have a great copy of this anyway and that's one of the reasons I was a wee bit reluctant buying this black contemporary lovely label. Um, so this was the first time Max, uh, Max Roach Sonny Rollins recorded as a trio, I think, first time he ever done it, and he went on mostly to record with, as a trio. Uh, and he does some standards in here, Duke Ellington, Come Gone, written by himself. Um, yeah, so a couple of his own tracks. It's a great, it's a concept album. And Sonny Rollins loved Cowboys as a young kid cowboy movies and whatever and um so that is 
I'm an old cow hand, uh, wagon wheels, and obviously Way Out West is one of the tracks. And it's a fantastic album. Every jazz guy should really have it. If you like sax, obviously, and three piece, it's quite different. So that was recorded in 1957. He went back to Los Angeles or the West two years later and he recorded this album. Sonny Rollins and the Contemporary Leaders. And it was called Leaders because all the, the guys, again, were leaders in their own right, had solo albums. So we had um, Barney Kessel, Hampton Hawes, Leroy Vinegar, and Shelley Mann on drums. It's a black label again. Yeah. Now, you can pick up copies of this. this. When I wasn't going to buy the box set, I was just, just to be in with the times, I was just going to buy this and the other one, just get them off eBay, uh, just copies to have, as I really do like Sony Rollins. And um, great cover again, uh, so recording 59. Uh, but anyway, I bought it anyway. Um, so we have uh, Barry Kessel on guitar here. So it's quite, it's quite really different. A bit soft album for uh, Sonny Rollins, and not one of his best albums, in my opinion, or not one of my favourite. It will be other people's uh, likes the West Coast sound, but it's got Sonny Rollins sax on there, and it's um, if you're a completist anyway, it's the one they have. And the third album, really, yeah, I mean, you can pick this up for buttons. Released in 1986, and it would probably been a digital copy. I would think the copies round about that time. It's just the alternate takes of the two albums. So you've got three tracks. Um, just shown pics there from the original picture photographs and session photographs. Um, I think it's on the black contemporary. As I say, not an album I would have originally wanted to pay £50 for. No way. No, no way. Uh, it's not worth, worth that for alternate takes. Different if there were tracks not on the albums. But these, uh, obviously, are just slight variations of the tracks. And it was released as an album, but um, it's a £10 album all day. It's not going to be on my turntable a hell of a lot, but... It's the two albums that you've done on Contemporary. So there you go. Alternate takes from 1986. And that's, so that's Sonny Rollins. Um, go West. Worth it for £99 if you can pick it up there. It was um, 80, 80 odd pounds plus um, tax I played on it. So it was free shipping. Okay, on to the big one, really, for me. Now the first... Um, you know what's coming anyway. The first um, first box set was a bit of a hassle actually. They were all all the albums inside were thrashed. The corner of the box was bashed, and two sides, the spine and the top, had uh, what do you call it? Seam splits on them. So eventually, I got a replacement. And it's Dorothy Ashby. Ashby with strings attached 1957 to 1965. Now I've been want, wanting to get into more harp music for a long time and it's filed under jazz music. And here's that. That's the six LPs. It's on. So I bought an album a couple of months ago with Dorothy Ashby um, for 69, more um, spiritual one, and I really liked it. I knew there was singing on that and no singing, there's no singing on these. Um, Dorothy Ashby, yeah, I mean, our original albums are really hard to find. And this, I can't remember how many copies they're making this. It might be four or five thousand, but that's it. They're not making any more box sets of this. Now it's released on the Newland label. I think they're out of the UK. And they're just actually releasing a 
Charles Mingus 4LP box set. Anyway, we'll have a wee quick look at this. So it's, again, it's beautifully done with silver. Silver writing on it. And a bit of a slip case here, I'll take it right out. And so many little harps on it. And again, a beautiful book light of um, Dorothy Ashby's life, really, and it's really a fantastic read. Um, so I really enjoyed getting to know about Dorothy Ashby. Now, she went to the same school as Alice Coltrane, and uh, such a beautiful woman, and a uh, lovely story there about her. Um, so, brilliant booklet, great, and I'll just give you the hype sticker here, six studio albums, honestly, for 50, 70, 65, remastered directly from the original analogue tapes by uh, Kevin Gray, uh, manufactured at Palace in Germany, 180 grams, um, limited edition one-time pressing of this 6LP box set, so I paid, again, not a great, I mean, they're not going cheap these, um, got it for about £205, so it was a pretty good price because it can go for quite a bit more than that. Okay, so I'll just run through the 6LPs quickly. Not a big variation on the music like our latter one, can't remember what it's called, the spiritual one I got there. Um, is a more jazz based in the band are more or less the same. So this was our first release from 1957, The Jars Harpist by Dorothy Ashby, obviously. And there's the label there, Newland um, in mono. I think they're all in mono, I think. Well, maybe not, but this is certainly mono. So seven tracks, and the band's more or less the same on the first three or four albums anyway. Frank Wes on flute, Mandel Marshall bass, and Eddie Jones on bass. So the uh, Marshall uh, Wendell Marshall only plays bass on one track, and Ed Thing Pen on drums. Who I don't know, uh, but it's um, recorded at Rudy Van Gelder's and. Really nice. Second album from 1958 is Hip Hop. Lovely cover there. And all, all these covers are sort of like a matte feel. They're not the big high gloss, but they feel nice in the hand. And all the covers are fairly similar. Yeah, from 1958, Arthur Taylor on drums, Frank Wes on flute, and Herman Wright, Herman Wright on bass. Well, it was slightly, it was Eddie Jones that played the bass in a level one. So a different, uh, different drum and bass player. Um, but uh, Frank Wes's uh, flute through this is quite, so it jumps between the flute and the, and the harp on the, the brakes and it's uh, yeah really nice I love the flute anyway so another fantastic album third album is In a Minor Groove this is from 1958 again another fantastic cover it's the same in mono eight tracks on this one um, yeah, Herman Wright on bass again and Roy, ha Roy Haynes on drums this time, so the rhythm section changing a little. Um, so the three albums are fairly similar in style, jazz uh, and the jump between the harp and flute. Now the next album from 1961 is the swing harp. Soft Winds, the swing harp of Dorothy Ashby. Just 
the labels are the same with just a different colour. Purple, purple. Um, 11 tracks on this one. Now she changes a wee bit here. She's got um, Terry Pollard on Vibes. Which is Terry is as a female. Um, so it's a nice change from, from the other three, three LPs. And the band's a wee bit different. We've got Herm Herman Wright on bass again. Jimmy Cobb on drums this time. Recorded in New York over a two day period. Um, uh don't think I don't think Rudy recorded this one. Um a wee bit different. I prefer the flute to the to the vibes on this. It just softens well softens up. I'm not sure that's the right word, but just um uh, yeah for the box set it's a good change. It's a good change of pace. That's soft winds. The swinging harp of Dorothy Ashby. The two you go. And this is just the next one is just the self-titled uh, Dorothy Ashby. This is from 1962. This was originally released on Verve Records. They're just going with the same label here. And again in mono. And the band will change here again if you can find them. This is probably Well, the next one's pretty, uh, this is probably one of the best out there. So if you're going to have a testy one Dorothy Ashby, you know, this this one or the next one, I would say, well, it's for the box anyway, is a good one to, to try. Um, and again, there's about 10 tracks on this one Diango. It's from 1962. Um, and uh, there's an Ellington track on this. Dorothy Ashby writes some music uh, recorded in Chicago um, Dorothy Ashby harp Herman Wright on bass and John Tooley on drums so you're getting down to the nitty gritty there and I think that's what makes it better it's just like a, uh, no no flute or um, anything else and to uh, Take away. So a fantastic album, Dorothy Ashby, great. And the last but not least is from 1965, so a couple of years later. The fantastic jazz harp of Dorothy Ashby. And a nice, nice bit of artwork on this one too. Label, as you see, we've got a new, new land label on it. Um, and these, these were originally recorded, I see one was Verve. They were all sort of different labels, I think, more or less, of the time. Uh, Prestige. Uh, this was on Atlantic. So the uh, Newlands have managed to bring together um, the different, um, which is unusual in a box set. You get that from different records. But they're maybe all owned by Kraft anyway, so not such a big problem. So we've got 10 tracks on this. Again, a fantastic album. And... Uh, really like it and the band would be hidden somewhere from us but um, uh, yeah anyway it's a beautiful box set 205 pounds minimum you're paying here anyway um, maybe wait around till the sales it's definitely worth it I mean I, I've been wanting to get into jazz harp jazz harp will harp in a big way or more so anyway um, in recent times and I may go down the folk I've not really got any folk harp sort of classical classical harp uh, but Celtic folk harp is maybe where my heart lies with a harp I would think but uh, this is a beautiful set anyway and I'm a addict for um, box set so there you go it's I'm very pleased with it Dorothy Ashby with strings attached 57 to 1965 okay folks good weekend catch you later bye then